Hi, everybody. Hello. This is the X-rated stand-up comedy act, right? <laughs> That's what I do the best. Tell me, how did uh, you, Dennis, and Jeff connect? Uh, through Jeff's manager, who is actually our agent now, Alejandro Oriella, who lives in Chile. Uh, Jeff wanted to start touring again because he hadn't toured that much in the last 10 years. And um, so he just sort of, they just sort of brainstormed, who, who would you like to get? And they just came up with me and, me and Dennis. And you've played before together? I had played with Dennis on um, Tom Coster's, one of Tom Coster's records. And I played with Jeff on his very first album. And in fact, it was the very first album I was ever on in my life. It was his wow. first solo album. Wow. Mm -hmm. When I met him when I was a student at school and he was a teacher. Which school was that? M.I. M.I., yeah. yeah. In so Hollywood. when was that? Uh, 81. Okay. So M.I. just started around then. Is that right? M.I. started in 78, so I guess I was in the third year. Are there any other kind of famous guitarist names that came from your year as well? Sure. Uh, well, I don't know if they were in my class, but there were certainly, everybody knows Frank and Bali. He was a student there. Um, Jimmy Herring was a student there who's done a lot of stuff. There, I mean, there are quite a few guys. So you guys have toured a lot together. Mm -hmm. What's different on this tour? What should we expect that is different? Nothing. We just hate each other more. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> That's not what they were telling me. <laughs> no, it's, we're, we're, we're kind of keeping the kind of same kind of con uh, kind of concept because I'm in tribal tech and I also have my own trio. Jeff has his own band, so we don't we just don't have time to write for this project. So we play covers. We're we're right. we're like a we're like a jazz top 40 band. Um, everybody seems to like the playing, but there are a few that don't like the fact that we aren't playing original music. But for us, it's fun to get away from our own music sure. because after you write those tunes and you play them for a long time, you get sick of listening to your own music. So <laughs> for us, it's fun to play music by other people. And these tunes that we're playing are sort of like like when John Coltrane plays There's Na No Greater Love, when we play Black Market by Weather Report, for us it's kind of the same. Those are our standards, yeah. you know, so, so uh, it's a lot of fun to, to play music by people we grew up listening to. Are we going to see another album from you guys at, at any stage, do you think? It, well, yeah, we need material. So as we um, sort of comb through the archives of, of music that we like, we try to pick material. Of course, it's a little difficult for me being a guitar player, um, not being a keyboard player and not having uh, the ability to, to play some of the more difficult chord changes and melody at the same time, because I'm not Ted Green. Uh, if I was, uh, the, the, it would be a lot easier to pick tunes, because that guy could play just about anything. But I'm playing with more of a distortion tone, so I'm not playing big full chords a lot. So I have to pick tunes that fit my style and also fit the band, and I do not want to cover guitar players. I want to cover music that's sort of like non-guitar oriented, like keyboard oriented, or pop oriented, or something. Because what's the use of covering guitar music? It's already been done probably better than I could do it. So I'd, I'd rather just kind of stick to the format we're at now and covering music that's a little bit weird. I get it. And, and of the compositions you're covering, I suspect that we're kind of going to see kind of heads and melodies, but quite a lot of improvisation as well. Oh, a lot, yeah. I mean, we only play the, the recognizable parts of tunes. The audience knows what tune it is, but then we kind of take it from there and do right. our own thing. So that's yeah. the magic, really, isn't it? That's the fun part. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Get the head over with so you can solo. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly are a guitarist. Right, yeah. Typical stereotype jazz musician. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the magic of the trio and why you want to work with these two well, great guys. Well, you know, one thing is you want to learn when you play. You know, uh, uh, these guys would probably say the same thing, but, you know, I always feel like I'm the worst one in the band. And that's where I want to be because I want to learn from guys that do things better. I mean, I'll be honest with, right, and you're going to see me get lost a hundred times tonight because I don't know what the fuck Dennis is doing, you know? I mean... His rhythmic concept is so far away from anything that I have ever studied, or you know, because I've just never studied um, breaking apart different rhythms and, and, and those type of rhythmic cousins and subdividing beats and stuff like that. I've never studied that in my life. So my uh, rhythmic uh, level is about on the same as Cool in the Gang. That's, 
that's about where I am, right? So a lot of stuff that Dennis does, I have to learn. I'm learning to get that internal clock going in myself where I can feel where one is and learn a lot of the stuff that he's playing and try to hang with it. Sometimes I fail, sometimes I fall flat on my ass. I mean, oh, that didn't make sense, but it's really kind of true that way. <laughs> and what about in terms of the way Jeff lays down what well, he does? Well, Jeff, does, Jeff is a, you know, I mean, he's a virtuoso, so he's, he's playing a lot of stuff that, you know, is way beyond just fundamental bass, you know. Depending on the kind of music you play, and this goes for any kind of music, um, there are certain limitations that, that musicians bring to the music and then there are certain kind of like over the top things that people bring to the music. In the case of the, the kind of music that we play, any one of us is capable of going just about anywhere we want. You know, because there's no rules here. You know, nobody, there's no music, music critics telling us that, oh, you went outside the rock idiom for a minute there. You played some other notes that don't belong in a blues scale. There's nobody criticizing us, so we, we can do anything we want. And that includes Jeff. So when he's playing, um, I often find it amazing that he can be as supportive as he is and still manage to get away with playing what he plays on top of that, which is really fun to listen to. So I enjoy it. We asked, um, as part of the kind of ticket process for uh, people who have come along tonight to submit questions, and one of the ones that uh, came out from a number of people was, I'm a someone who's kind of just starting out as a professional guitarist, and what advice would you have for me? Yeah, I can think of so many comedy answers right now. <laughs> Things have changed a lot in, since I was, like, say, an unknown player just coming up. And for me, one of the biggest things that I did for my career was just to try to get my name out there by playing with people who people already knew. I played with Jean-Luc Ponty for a while. I played with Chick Corea for a while, Joe, Joe Zawinul. Jeff, Tom Coster, a lot of people that, um, that had their names out there already. So when you get known as a side man, it helps because then when you start to do your own thing, people kind of know who you are. And, and of course, that can't be a bad thing. People that try to start from nothing and just like, okay, here I am, I have my band, sign us and we'll be famous. That just doesn't happen as much as it used to. I mean, from my perspective, um it seems to me that musicians need to support musicians a, a little more as well. I think so, yeah. I mean, you definitely don't want to be stealing musicians' albums and calling yourself a fan. Yeah. That's not really right. I mean, I don't have anything against downloading music, but that's supposed to be the trailer for the movie. You know, if you like it, you go out and see the movie. Sure. Right? And a lot of people download the records and then say, oh, I really like this. Then they never go out and buy the real thing. And, and if they don't think that makes the musicians suffer, they're really wrong, because it does. But... Has it meant more gigs for you, though, in, in terms of, on the flip side, people are going to live music more, certainly in the UK? Well, th this, what you have right here, is the same as a movie theatre. Right. You can't steal it. It's an experience that can't be stolen. Even when you see it on video, it's not the same thing as sitting there listening to a band live. Right. Just the same as the only thing that's keeping the movie business in business is the theatres. The live music experience is kind of what keeps the whole thing going in the face of such a, a bad time for the record industry and recording industry. Just on that note, we had a, an email today from Queen guitarist Brian May, who uh -huh. just said, wish I was here. Oh, nice. So that was yeah. great. It was yeah, great to I met see him once. He's a nice guy, man. Yeah. A great player. Um, well, I'm looking forward to the gig so much. Thanks, me too. We, we, you know, uh, um, one thing, I, I, I've never done this before in my life, actually talk to the audience before we play so it's a new experience for me and I get to say this which is just I hope you all have fun because that's all really that's all we do is we just have fun you know? right. uh, yeah. and uh, so, some people think some people think a concert is a chance for musicians to prove their abilities and it's not we couldn't care less. <laughs> we have nothing to prove to anybody. We just go up and have a good time. And when we do, we find that that translates to the audience and everybody has fun. Because uh, for any of musicians, I think everybody knows that the more you care about how you play, the worse you play. <laughs> if you don't give a shit, you play your ass off, right? And that's a lesson that's hard to learn because it's hard not to care. But when you just go out there for the purpose of having fun, not to be judged or not to prove anything to anybody, but just have a relax and have a fun evening, things go well. 
Yeah. That, that's a life lesson, really, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And I think the kind of um, the way you guys use improvisation as a life lesson as well. You know, the, yeah. that I things mean, are in the now and they move. And things they are in the now, and one thing that's really important is not to compare too too much. You know, yesterday to today, because music's like life. You have good days, you have bad days. If it was all on one level, it wouldn't be much fun. So uh, actually, the, the the nights where we make the most mistakes are the most funny to me because I, I I like mistakes. I think yeah. they're humorous. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when Jeff makes them. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think there's going to be too many mistakes tonight. But, uh, thank you very much for doing the Q&A. There might be. And... We're pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. We don't touch this stuff. We're, very, we're a very sober band. We're not a lot of fun. <laughs> right. We'll see you okay. in, in thank 15 you. minutes. Appreciate Thanks, it. Scott. Thanks, you guys. Thank you.